Ladies and gentlemen, the Nanjing University Traditional Instruments Orchestra performing a live rendition of Mo Lin Hua, one of China's most beloved and popular folk songs. And they're doing it just for you, those of you who are watching live through our CGTN app, our website, and our social media platforms. I'm your host, Oscar Margain. Thank you so much for tuning in to Campus Crawl Live, where we feature the very best that universities across China have to offer, because who knows? Maybe Nanjing University could be the next place where you study or work at. And that's exactly the case that we're making during our show here today. We're going to be talking about biology, astronomy, atmospheric sciences. We'll talk about concert halls and we're going to talk about performing arts, history, culture, you name it. All the while we explore the beautiful two campuses here at Nanjing University where it really reflects the uh, dynamic and vibrant city of Nanjing. And that is the reason why we're out here. We're going to be taking you to concert halls. We're going to be taking you to observatories, to laboratories. And all you have to do is sit back and enjoy and engage. Send your questions, send your comments. We want you to participate. We might read some of those answers live during our show. Now, before we continue, before we move on, first things first, we need to talk history. And that's why we have our co-host, Serena Dong, who traveled across the city to downtown Nanjing, where she visited the Gulo campus and brings us and takes us on a brief historical tour. the oldest campus of Nanjing University which ages over a hundred years and later I'll be taking you guys inside several of the landmark buildings on site follow me Now I'm sitting on the stairs of the landmark building on campus. The building itself was built back in 1990 and used to be the bell tower as well as the tallest building on site. Well, as you can see from the outside, it's a typical traditional Chinese architectural style incorporating with Western elements. Well, the building is not just about its beauty, but the stories I found inside. If you take a closer look, you can see these Chinese characters carved into the huge bricks that embedded in this wall. You know, the, the character says a person's name, title, where does he or she come from? But take a quick guess, what does this do and what do they mean? Well, the stories behind is back in the Ming Dynasty when builders were trying to construct this city wall. So they had to leave their names on the bricks. So once the city wall got damaged, the emperor back there would know who to blame on. Alrighty, moving on. Now we're walking into the Nanjing University Chapel. Well, it is another mixture of both East and Western architectural style building on campus. Well, the building itself was built back in the early 20th century and now it turns into this reception room, especially for international scholars and the guests, you know, to have a cup of teas, hang out, or talk in some real business. Well, it's also a popular place for graduation pictures or even wedding photos. Serena, so uh, ringing that bell really wants me, uh, makes me want to play some music. But lucky for me, I'm still hanging out with the Traditional Instrument Orchestra here at Nanjing University. And I'm hanging out here with one of the members, actually just a few of the members. Before I continue, though, I want to hear from you. I want to know exactly what you think about the traditional instruments of China and what you think about the orchestra. really want to hear your comments, so please post them, and we might read some of those during our show here live. Now, like I said, I'm joined by one of the members of the orchestra. Can you please help us introduce yourself? I'm Zhang Qianya from Business School. I'm the player of Chinese Decima. Decima. Okay, very nice. And tell us how many members are in the orchestra? About 45. About over 45. Over yeah. 45 members mm -hmm. of the yes. orchestra here. And so tell us a little bit, why is the orchestra called the Traditional Instruments Orchestra? 
Uh, because all of us were combined and just because of the traditional Chinese instrument. Instruments, okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, tell us a little, just a little bit about the history of these instruments uh, before okay. we move on and also the names of them here. Okay, this first instrument is Arhu. It is a two-stringed riddle and it is one of the most important instruments in the Chinese orchestra. Okay, can we hear a little bit? Okay. Just a small piece here. Wow, so nice. It sounds very folky, right? Like yeah. a folk music. It, it, it does. Very traditional, obviously very traditional Chinese here. What do we have uh, next to this gentleman right over here? This is Di Zi, and also known as bamboo flute because the, of its material. I see, made out of bamboo, I assume, yeah. right. Okay, let's hear from it. So nice, guys. I mean, that really, that, when I listen to that, I picture, you know, the lakes and rice fields, and it's just very, very symbolic of China. Right. Yeah. It does. <laughs> yes. So let's move on here to, we got two more instruments. And tell us a little bit before we move on to these instruments, uh, the, the whole Belt and Road, we hear a lot about that. How do those instruments play a role in, in the Belt and Road? Uh, all this instrument has a strong relationship with the uh, nations alongside the Belt and Road in the history. Okay, and Belt and Road, of course, are you know it's just that like the Silk Road that travels all through through uh, uh, Eurasia and obviously parts of Asia as well. Yeah. And so the instruments are, are you can find some of these instruments also in that region. Is that correct? Yeah, they are similar. Very similar. Okay, yeah. okay. Let's hear the next one. What is this one called? This is pipa. The pipa. Okay. Oh, okay. So beautiful. I, I think this is going to be my favorite. I'm being a little biased, guys, but I love the sound of the, of the pipa. It really also makes me picture of like rain and temples and, you know, uh, going back in ancient times. It's really, really awesome. I, mm -hmm. if, I were, if I could learn an instrument, it would probably be that one, at least for now. Okay. Let's hear this next one. What's this one called? This is zhong ruan, means middle ruan xian. Okay, let's hear it. Wow, very subtle. There's obviously a lot of emotion, and it feels like a very dramatic instrument here that they're playing. Very yes. similar to a guitar, but it still has these tones of that remind you of ancient, uh, you know, China. It is so cool. Now I know you have also prepared an instrument back here with us, yes. which I am excited to hear because it is extremely strange. I've never seen anything <laughs> like this before. So, uh, are, are you going to show us a little demonstration? Okay. 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 Let's sit down over here. And what is this one called before we continue? Okay, this one is a Chinese decima, and in Chinese we call it yang qing. Yang qing, okay. Yes. And you, I see you have some sticks here in your hand. What is, yes. Is this how you play the instrument? You use yes. these? Yes. Okay. And I see so many strings here, but we're using sticks like if it was percussion. That's so strange to combine both, both you know, it seems like a, a, a percussion element, but also with strings. Let's hear it. Okay. Uh, so you can follow me. This is the first. I hit right here. Yeah, right here. Okay. Oh. This one. <laughs> <laughs> Just a it's so bit. difficult to look at all the strings. <laughs> oh my God! How can you tell? Okay. After uh, your practice, you okay. can manage it. <laughs> of course, okay. practice makes perfect. Okay. Yes. Let me try this, guys. That's right. A little oh. off. Not yeah. as good as you did it. <laughs> But this yes. is really cool. It sounds like a piano. A piano it that actually you... has the same origin. I see, I see. Yes. Well, they're all beautiful instruments. I really do appreciate that they gave us a little demonstration. You gave me a little quick crash course. <laughs> but I want to talk more about the actual orchestra. Okay. And so uh, I see you've got some awards back here. Yes. So we're going to head back there and, and so you can help explain what okay. that's all about. Okay, so we've got a couple of recognitions. Let me see over here. Um, what do we have? Yeah. So are, are these like awards or, you know, where do these come from? 
Uh, they all comes from we uh, traveling to different nations. We are invited to give performance there. So we've performed outside of China as well. Yeah, we have traveled to five continents up to now. Five, five continents. Five, basically, that's almost the whole world, isn't it? I'm, I don't know if I'm missing any. <laughs> uh, for example, we travel to the UK, the USA, uh, the Malaysia, the Japan, South Korea, Chile, Peru, Australia, and wow. just so much of that. Wow. Okay. So these are rec uh, recognitions from each one of these performances abroad. Yes. Correct. Okay. So what's your favorite, uh, you know, performance that you've done outside of China? Uh, my favorite performance is, is the ones in Chile and Peru, for example. In Chile and Peru. Okay. Yeah. So you've got a brochure here. Okay. Well, after oh, you got pi pictures. Okay. Yes, we get the pictures. Okay. We're gonna ask uh, my cameraman uh, Guo to get a little closer so we can see this. So this is in Chile or Peru? Uh, both. Uh, in both. both okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And what was the reaction from audiences from another country? You know, from countries like Chile and Peru. I say they give us a, a really warm applause, and after our performances, they always uh, come to the stage and want to know more about our instruments. Wow. Well, that's another reason why we're here too. We run, really want to know more about these traditional instruments. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, no surprise that they would be so curious and so interested in this. Tell us a little bit more about your experience. I think you mentioned at the beginning of our segment here that yeah. you you study you don't you're not studying music i thought you were studying music no we major we major in different uh, uh, different majors yes you are so i'm so from everybody, business school everybody from Paris. School. yes oh my we god everybody's so cool uh, okay it's so good at what they're playing but they're not majoring in music that is so yes. impressive so you're okay. choosing or you're studying business you said right yes and you know, do you, you know, what's the selection process? You know, obviously you have to be talented to make part of this incredible orchestra. It, it, you know, so tell us, how does one, you know, make it to the orchestra? Uh, everyone may have the orchestra, but we can balance our life, our study, and the training. Okay, okay. Yes. And I see more pictures here. Can you tell us a little bit more about these performances? All these performances are given in, uh, given in the other nations, and we will take the pictures to uh, serve as our souvenir. Okay. Yeah. So you uh, tell us a little bit more how you balance. How do you do it? You have to study a lot for for your business degree, mm -hmm. but you're also practicing music. Is it is it more difficult to do both, or does music give you you know an opportunity to relax? Uh, what was what's your experience with that? Uh, my experience is that we can balance this well, and perhaps I have to give my gratitude to the university for they offer us a great uh, a great window to look out outside the nation, and we can know more about the uh, local culture and, and in those countries. Yes, right? yes, wow, that's incredible. You know, you know, for everybody who's watching and interested, and they come here and study at this university, that means they have the opportunity to do really cool things like performing arts, including playing music and traveling, like you said, you get to visit other parts of the world. Isn't that incredible to travel and play music for other people? I it, think the most important is to give a better performances to uh, to the uh, natives from the other nations. Exactly, because you are representing China. Yes. And, and so you're doing it in a magnificent way. Thank you so much. Well, congratulations on all your achievements and everything you've been doing here. Thank you. And uh, we're going to take a few comments here from our audiences who are commenting. We did ask them to participate, so now we're going to see what they have to say. I'm going to read a few of those here out loud. Now, we've got uh, Suresh uh, Narzari says, soft and melodies. And uh, uh, Padam Sampang says, uh, right, uh, lovely song. He says, very lovely song. That's right. That's a Moli Huai, right? Moli Huai? Moli Huai. Moli Huai, uh, right? Yeah, Is that what you're Huai. playing? Okay. Yeah, yeah, Did I get that right? Sometimes I butcher the language and I'm really, really, really sorry. Uh, but uh, anyway, it is a very popular song and I really thank you for what you're doing. So again, congratulations. You guys are truly, truly stars in what you do. And speaking of stars, guys, Serena Dong is here in the Xianling campus and she's at an observatory and she's talking space and science. Thanks, Oscar, and you are watching Campus Crawl Live with the CGTN. And right now, I'm inside the Observatory of School of Astronomy and Space Science. You know, as I mentioned before, Nanjing University is one of the most prestigious institutions of higher education in China. On top of that, the School of Astronomy and Space Science has been 
at the leading position in this um, industry in China. And, uh, and, and also, this is a place where students get to practice and, and observing the outer space apart from what they've learned from the textbooks. So right next to me is this giant, huge 65 centimeter reflecting you know, telescope. The first time, you know, it was very amazing. It, it was very stunning for the um, first viewers. And today, I'm so lucky we get to talk to uh, one of the associate prof professors from this school, Mr. Zhang Zhenghua. Hi, how are you? Hi, Thanks nice for you. Uh, joining our live stream. So this giant telescope. So what, how does it work? Tell us more about this. Yeah, so basically, uh, the telescope is controlled downstairs in the control room. Mm -hmm. We don't move it by our hands. Of course, so, it's too big. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, uh, yes. Uh, so basically, this is a reflecting telescope. Mm -hmm. The first telescope of this kind mm -hmm. was made by Isaac Newton, like mm -hmm. um, uh, 350 years ago. Wow. So this mm -hmm. one, this telescope, telescope have two mirrors. Two so, mirrors, yes. yeah. So the starlight com coming from the window and reach the primary mirror at the bottom of the tel telescope inside. Mm -hmm. So reflected upwards to the secondary mirror mm -hmm. and reflect, uh, reflected again and uh, get into the camera below the telescope. Where's the camera? So the Can black you point box it there, to us? Yes. right here. So there's a CCD detector inside. Mm -hmm. So this device can uh, transfer um, the light signal into electronic signal and uh, then save it and transfer it to the computer in the control room. Okay, so what, th what type of images you guys have you know, collected from the previous observations? Well, depending on wh where you are looking at. Mm -hmm. So if you're in interested with anything, Let's like say galaxies, yes. galaxies, stars, stars. Yes. Okay. Uh, star clusters, and, uh, star yeah, clusters. Anything you're, and also Jupiters, or, or like other planets in our solar system. Okay, yes. wow, sounds very interesting. As you mentioned before, the, all the images were collected at the computers downstairs, right? Yes, so, so, so our students come here to observe, to learn how to use it, and how, mm -hmm. also how to reduce the data. Yes. I see. But before we are going downstairs, I do want to uh, toast you. Uh, I do want to welcome you guys to ask or leave any questions. If you you anything you are interested or any questions you want to ask to uh, Professor John right here to about the astronomy or like outer space or anything astronomy related. This is a very rare opportunity, you know, because well, Mr. John will just answer your questions during our live stream. My so, pleasure. <laughs> thank you. So don't forget to leave your comments or questions on all of our social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, and Weibo. We'll make sure to get back to you as soon as we can. All right, let's step down and to yes, see yes, the images yes. you guys collected before. Yes, so uh, <laughs> yes, we should have some, yes, because mm -hmm. we uh, students come here um, very often to, to do the observation. So this line. is um, this is the telescope students, not only professors, but students get to practice as well, yes, right? Yes, mainly for students training, yeah. yes. Okay, yes. cool. So he, uh, there we go. Hi, how are you? Um, <laughs> okay, what's your name? My name is Zhang Xinran. What year are you in? I'm a junior student. Junior student. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So um, I know you are prepared. You have prepared some images, you know, collected from the telescope upstairs. Can yeah. you just show the images to us real quick? Uh, of course. Mm -hmm. Here are some images from previous observations. Why well, it looks so dark? Because you know, from uh, you know, from the uh, pictures reviewed by NASA or any other like National Geograph Geographic oh. or any publications before the pictures from the outer space always looks like a stunning, oh, beautiful yeah, yeah, and yeah. colorful. I wonder um, why this is, looks so dark. Uh, this image, this kind of images are what we can get from direct observations. Oh. Uh, those kind of images may be after some corrections or some um, other... I see. Process. So this is the original images we collected directly yeah. from the telescope without any correction, yes, yes, without yes. any color corrections, right? Yeah. So so this one you're showing is? Uh, this one is an in interacting uh, galaxy is, um, in e evolution. Mm -hmm. You can see it is a spiral galaxy, just like our galaxy. And you can see there are two spiral arms. Mm -hmm. And this one is collect, uh, in interact connect with another galaxy and maybe after many years they will merge. They will merge together. Yeah. 
Okay. And, uh, this one is a planetary nebula. A it planetary is just like nebula. A, yeah. Like a ring. And looks the, like a ring. Yeah. Yes. And in the center of the ring, it usually have a hot star in it. In the hot center. Hot star. Hot star. Okay. Maybe so usually it is a white dwarf. I see. In the wow. center of the ring. Mm -hmm. And the next one is a cluster, just like this. Is this a star cluster? Yes. Because um, we can see a lot of spots there. Yeah. Every bright spot on it, on the screen, mm -hmm. is like this, all this uh, is a star. Uh -huh. Just like uh, our sun. Or I things. see. When did you guys collect these images? When? Like, is it in recent month or? Uh, all, always it is at night. We do the observations at night. At night, but these images are come from the recent experiment or? Recent. Recent um, experiment. Sometimes we just do the observations. Okay, so I, I assume you guys have to stay all night yes. to collect all these images. Do you enjoy this? Of course. <laughs> all right, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, well, that was a very, you know, all yes. surprising yes. pictures because yes. you know I've, as I've uh, said before all the um, pictures we've seen before are all very stunning colorful and beautiful and this is the first time ever I see the real original pictures you know I'm very glad yes. so <laughs> this right. is a terrace at this observatory so mm -hmm. we have a very good view of the campus here. yes I and, can uh, see that because uh, during the day we cannot observe stars but mm -hmm. our students are trying to observe the surface of the sun I so, see yes. we can uh, uh, so we can see there are, you know, several students are trying to adjusting the little, like this small telescope. Hello. So how, how are you? Hi. Hello, my name is Zhu Xingye mm -hmm. and I'm a third year undergraduate student here. Good, good. So can you tell me a little bit more about this telescope? It looks okay. like much, much smaller than yeah, the yeah. one we saw upstairs. Okay. It is a 12.7-centimeter uh, telescope. Oh, only 12.7 uh, yeah. versus 65 centimeters. Yeah, but it's interesting that a, a smaller telescope will mm -hmm. have a larger field of view, meaning that you can see more objects or larger objects at I a time see. using this one. Oh, I see. So, uh, but the larger like di diameters on telescope yeah, will see... see I see, yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. This one can give you an overall picture. Okay, so I know most of the tele telescopes are s supposed to work in during dark night. Yes. So you guys can observe the stars, you know, moon or galaxy or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But this one is obviously, because right now it's like in the middle of the noon. Yeah. So what were you trying to see right now? Uh, it's noon time, so what, what you can see is the sun. It, uh, wow. But okay. uh, be careful, when you observe the sun, you have to use this one, use this filter. Ah, uh, this filter. It will block most of the light, or the, the, the brightness of the sun will burn your eyes. Oh, uh, so this is just used for to, you know, protect our eyesight, yes, right? Yes. Okay, can you, can you, sh I was quite interested, can I take, yes. can I take a look? Uh, okay. Is it already oh, on? I, I will just okay. So he's trying to adjust the uh, telescope so we, I can take a fresh look of what the sun looks like through a telescope here, right here. Okay, I'll just take a quick look. It's uh, to me, it's just like a you know a spread out of orange. Yes, nothing, it is. nothing there. Because you know, uh, the sun has a activity period of eleven years, and these days, uh, it is a quiet sun, meaning oh. that there is there is no big sunspots out there. I see. Uh, but however, once are, once the yeah. sun is like moving actively, yeah, it or, will have more sunspots. It has black. Dark spots out. Uh, okay. The dark spots on the yeah. on the surface of the sun. Yeah. Of okay. course, nowadays, uh, uh, these days, there are smaller ones, mm -hmm. but you cannot see them with this one. You can see them with larger telescopes. I see. How often do you guys observing by the um, telescope? How uh, often, like you know, every, every one, month. every month, or like half a year, or anything? Every uh, month. Every month. So, no, are, no. are you enjoying this? Of course, it's <laughs> interesting. Why do you, I, I wonder how, how, why do you pick up the um, astronomy as your major? Uh, well, of course, uh, when, when I was a little kid, I loved mm -hmm. reading books about astronomy, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, learning how these galaxies form, how stars evolve. Mm -hmm. Later on, when I was in high school, mm -hmm. I became a member of the astronomy club where I gave lessons to these younger students. Really? When yeah. you were in high school? Yeah, of course. Wow, and, cool. And now, later, uh, later I learned that uh, Nanyang University has the best department of astronomy among all the universities in China. <laughs> of <laughs> so course. That's why I'm here. Okay, cool. So, 
Um, are you gonna, you know, continue your uh, interests and, you know, after your graduation, what, will you be an astronaut? Let's say. Of course, I want to. Do you want to uh, be? <laughs> keep on working on uh, astronomy research. You know, there are still many mysteries unsolved. So. It's really attractive for me. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Well, good luck. Good luck with everything. And thanks for uh, showing us, uh, showing me the uh, surface of the sun. Thank you. Well, that was a very cool experience for me because yes, that yes. obviously is the first time I've ever seen a you know surface of the sun through a smaller you know telescope. Yes. Yes. I'm, students are very lucky here. Mm -hmm. so, at their age. When I was younger, I didn't have this opportunity to yeah. go to observatory to have this experience. I see, because you yeah. know, obviously, our university provides the most, you know, cutting-edge technologies and also most up-to-date. So you know, these students can only can not only just learn knowledge from their textbooks, but also get some hands-on experience, right? Yes. Okay, so uh, just a little bit um, heads up because we're walking down the stairs and then, you know, the, the, uh, the image will be a little bit, a little bit you know, sh um, a shallow. So the other camera is putting on the views on the top of this observatory, yes. which so I the, can, we can see the overview of the campus, right? Yes, right. So we are on the top of the hill inside mm -hmm. the campus. You yeah. Know, this campus. It's, mm -hmm. it's a very big campus. So. Uh, uh, yes, we have a big uh, apartment here mm -hmm. working uh, on astrophysics. Like we have 60 staff members um, stated into different uh, research groups, mm -hmm. like the uh, covering a wide range of research field in astronomy and astrophysics. Yeah, as um, we can see, all these yeah, billboards so, on so the in wall. The uh, solar physics group, mm -hmm. uh, they study the structure, um, uh, hydromagnetics, and of the uh, flares sun. Like, uh, of the sun. Right, so, right yes, here. This is the a flares. flares. From the sun, yes. I see. Observed from uh, with different. That's one specialization. Yes. So okay. in the planetary uh, group, mm -hmm. uh, we study uh, the formation of planets mm -hmm. and also uh, extrasolar system planets mm -hmm. and uh, brown dwarf as well. I see. So we also have a high energy group. They study uh, the uh, gamma ray bursts, mm -hmm. uh, neutron stars, and uh, supernovae. Mm -hmm. And in the uh, extra galactic group, they study the starburst galaxies. Um, this one. Yes. Right? So, and also dynamics of galaxies, like interacting galaxies, uh, uh, picture. And also um, the uh, active mm -hmm. uh, galactic uh, nuclei as I well. See. So, well, so this, this observatory mm -hmm. also open to public. Oh, is uh, it? Yes, we oh, organize cool. some. Um, uh, public uh, engagement event. So um, yeah, I remember yesterday you showed us there's a planetary yes. inside that room. So this room, is the right? most popular room actually. Because uh, is it open to public as well? Yes. So okay. when we have visitors, we we have the show. Okay. Yes. So what uh, does it show there usually? Well, so the, so they show the modified movies. So mm -hmm. it, making you like a. It's like a spacecraft mm -hmm. can take you into the deep universe in minutes. Oh, so, so, so I like it's very much. Yes, yeah, so it's more like an obvious and more straightforward way to show the galaxies to yes, you to feel all the reviewers, yes. right? Yes, feel involved. Yes. yes. Well, uh, before we let you go, there's do there's one question posted from the netizens online. So the question is, will there be a music sh show later? Well, that's nothing related. Yeah. As to astronomy, but it's okay. I'm sure there are, you know, um, viewers who are very interested in astronomy and the space science, or very interested in the school, um, you know, from Nanjing University. But if we do have, if we do receive some, you know, question related to astronomy, we will make sure to pass it to you. Yeah, no problem. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your time. You're welcome. All right, bye. Bye. All right. Thank you, thank you guys so much. So that is all for our School of Astronomy and the Space Science. But before I let you go, you know, um, don't forget that as I toasted before, we will have this little souvenir, which is a calendar painted by alumni from Nanjing University of the um, year of 2020. So do leave your comment or anything on our, all of our social media platform. You will be lucky if you, you can get this calendar Calendar. All right, I heard you know my co-host Oscar is trying to test some air qualities with the, the students um, on campus. Let's just give it to him. Thank you so much.
much, Serena. We have moved now here to the, uh, welcome back to the Stanley campus. We moved outdoors. We have some beautiful weather here. The sun, the sun is shining, but that's not the reason why we came outdoors. Obviously, if you can see, there's something floating right above us, and that is the reason why we're out here. I'm trying to find out what is this balloon. A lot of people here in Nanjing are giving it different nicknames from the, the white carrot to a UFO, even a flying submarine, and they're all valid descriptions, but we need to find out for sure what is the official name and what it what it does officially obviously here and for that to help dispel some of these myths we are joined right now by the dean of the atmospheric sciences college uh, dr ding Aijung. and so thank thank you so much for joining us and for helping us explain and dispel some of these myths please tell us first of all what's the official name of this balloon okay uh, this uh, is we call a tethered airship a, te a tethered airship. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. So we're not calling it uh, white carrots anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Tethered yes. airship. That's yes. the proper name. Yes. And yes. so, basically, give us just an overall understanding. What is the main function of this airship? Yeah. Uh, this airship, we try to use this platform to do uh, vertical profile measurement of PM two point five chemical species and uh, uh, its precursors. Then we can understand how the air pollution formed in the atmosphere. Okay, so basically it, it studies chemicals to study pollution, right? Yes. You know, analyzes chemicals so you can study pollution, yes. basically. Uh, a little more, uh, you know, dumbed down version of, of the scientific terms that yeah. you have given us. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so you've got this balloon. Help us understand how it works exactly. Because mm. right now, it's obviously it's tethered. It's always tethered, so it won't fly away. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you, you release it sometimes, yes. right? Tell us why. Yeah, the, the key issue is we, we need uh, this cable to, prov uh, to provide the electricity power mm -hmm. to have the instrument, onboard instrument run, and then we can have the data trans uh, transfer from uh, the balloon to ground surface. Okay, yeah. now talking about the instruments that are on board, let's start walking over here so we can uh, show everybody okay. what's attached to, to this airship. So I'm going to turn over here this way and mm -hmm. you can help start explaining here. So first of all, we mm -hmm. see a huge crew of people that are helping keeping this balloon uh, close to ground, right? Yes. What's the reason for that? For this uh, tethered airship, of course, we, as I mentioned, we have this cable mm -hmm. to, to uh, tether the, uh, the airship nearby ground surface. But uh, we can also have this balloon to uh, fly in the sky. Mm -hmm. So uh, currently the people uh, are just run this platform because we have the wind. So usually when we have very strong wind, they need to operate this platform uh, oh. uh, to, to, to keep it run safely. So, so even when it rains too, and when you have some some more severe weather, that's when you have to bring for, it down. For very uh, strong uh, rainfall, it cannot be run. Okay. But uh, for wind speed, if we have a very high speed of wind, we cannot uh, run. Uh, just just because of the safety reason. Okay. Yeah. Now, if we keep moving over here, we see there's a, a large crew here. You have several people. Yes. You know, obviously trying to hold the balloon and mm -hmm. hold the uh, airship uh, in mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. uh, why do you need so many people? Is it because it, it requires, you know, so much delicate care? Yeah, they need to have the balloon, keep it, uh, its balance. Okay. And then, of course, we can uh, just rise, rise this balloon. Okay. Well, let, let's move over here, because okay. I'm really interested to know what's, what's happening on this side. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so he's holding on to, to they're holding on to this, the balloon right here. Yeah. What does this uh, vehicle here do exactly, apart from obviously holding the weight down? Mm -hmm. Does it do anything else? They also have some uh, automatic uh, control system in, the, in this room to, okay. to, to make this uh, balloon and also to monitor all the parameters uh, to keep this balloon in safety and also we can have uh, some data transfer back to the ground surface. I see. Okay, so you said that you study pollution here. Help us understand what exactly it's analyzing, because I know that, that that's something very important here in China right now, trying to obviously understand the effects of pollution, right? Yes. So what data is it collecting? What is that data for? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, maybe we can move a little bit here. here? We okay. have uh, one reactor just below this balloon. So we have uh, AMS on board. It can measure the uh, chemical uh, speciation of uh, PM2.5 and also some precursors. So uh, this is very important because so far the measurement in China, most of the measurement is just at the ground surface. So we need uh, this platform to really understand what is going on in the atmosphere. Okay. It can form in the atmosphere and also be transported long in long uh, long range 
uh, in a long way. Okay. okay, and why not maybe just fly an airplane? Like why, mm -hmm. you know, why don't you do that instead? Wouldn't yes. that be easier? Yeah, very, very good question. But for airplane, because airplane is usually very fast, mm -hmm. so it is very difficult. But so far, the plume mainly in the boundary layer, we call it the layer just below the one kilome kilometers. Okay. Yes, but for this tethered airship, we can actually good to, uh, of course, as, as uh, uh, to any uh, attitude as we wished, and uh, then to do the measurement there right. in very, very detailed uh, way. That, that makes a lot of sense, because obviously yeah. then an airplane would just fly by and yes. not really collect the yes. data that you need. Yes. So w what is it exactly about, and we can start walking yes. this way if you don't mind, uh, what is it exactly about the pollution that you're studying? What is it the, the main objective? What do you want to find out exactly? Okay, uh, we, we actually have two uh, specific uh, targets. Mm -hmm. The first of all, uh, of course, the, uh, for the aerosol, we also call it PM2.5 in, in China. Everybody knows that. We have some uh, aerosol uh, chemical composition like black carbon. And also we have a lot of secondary aerosol. So now one issue is we need to understand how much, uh, how many, uh, how much black carbon in the uh, in the atmosphere, and will also influence the, uh, how the air pollution influence meteorology, and also meteorology influence the air pollution. Oh, so we understand the feedback I of the two parts. So by, when you say meteorology, you mean like the effects of pollution and then obviously wind and other factors like rain and, and how that mixes in with our environment. Yes, That's yes. what you're studying. I see. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so tell us a little bit about how this technology has helped research and your mm -hmm. students here at Nanjing University. Uh, yeah, ac actually it helps a lot. As I mentioned uh, before, uh, two, two, two years ago we only mm -hmm. have the ground-based measurements. Okay. Uh, uh, but, but now we can really go to the upper boundary layer to understand what is going on there. Okay. Uh, of course in the upper boundary layer the air potential transport not only local but from long range, even from North China and even long, long region can be transported here. And then we can understand how this is go, going on, how that is uh, feedback. So does that mean that you have other airships in other parts of China as well, doing uh, the same analysis? Uh, uh, during, okay, during these months, we actually uh, have another two platform. We have two aircraft. Okay. One fly from Beijing to Wuhan and Nanjing, another one from Taiwan to Jinan. So okay. together with this airship, we can really understand the three-dimensional structure in the eastern part of China. I think it is one of the largest field campaigns in China so far. Wow, yeah. okay, yes, because yeah. obviously you're, you're covering such a huge geographical yes. region yes. in this data that you're analyzing. Yes. And so that's, a, that's an amazing opportunity for, for students, I would imagine, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so how long will it stay here, uh, you okay. know? Uh, so uh, we, our field campaign total have uh, almost two months. Okay. So the students, we, we, we set up this tethered airship uh, ten, 10 days ago, mm -hmm. and then we'll keep uh, running this field, uh, uh, field campaign until uh, only a middle of January, January. Until the middle yes, of January, yes. okay, and then it moves somewhere else to continue doing yes. data and, and, and research. Okay, yes. now this is, has this been funded by the Nanjing University or um, how, how do you get this technology here? Okay, uh, the, the funding source come from Ministry of uh, Science and Technology, okay. most in I China. That we, uh, I uh, currently coordinate uh, one of the key research and development project mm -hmm. to, to do for this study. Okay, understood, yeah. understood. Yeah, of course, the university support a lot, especially uh, uh, to, help, uh, to provide this area mm -hmm. and also supply some all, all other uh, materials for this field campaign. And another question I have for you here is, why have uh, why has the project chosen to study, you know, the eastern uh, part of China? Why was that so important? Okay, uh, so Nanjing actually uh, is the most south uh, area of the entire Eastern China. Mm -hmm. So uh, here is very important because of the Yangtze River Delta is one of the most developed region, and also we have air pollution here, and even uh, uh, some pollutants from the Shanghai, Suzhou, another 
uh, some other cities from the we call the city uh, cluster mm -hmm. can also transport to Nanjing. So Nanjing is a very unique place to do such kind of study. Yeah, it, again, it makes sense obviously to, to be closer to these huge metropolis. Mm -hmm. I want to understand a little bit more about the more global impact uh, that this re research can have. And uh, I understand you have a special guest here with you that you can help yes. us on, introduce yes. to us. Uh, and he's waiting right over here with yes, us yes, and it's such yes, a pleasure. We, yeah, we have uh, Professor De Liang Chen. And uh, yeah, this morning we just uh, okay have a ceremony to have Professor Chen as one of the honorary pro uh, professorship of Nanjing University. It is mm. such a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us and for sharing some of your knowledge. I know you're visiting here for a few days, so please tell us a little bit more about exactly that question I asked uh, Dr. Ding here. How does the information and the data that's being collected by these airships and here in Nanjing help overall the mission of solving this climate change? Yeah, climate change is really closely coupled to the uh, issue of air pollution. And uh, we understand quite well how climate has changed, why it has changed, but uh, the increasing air pollution has made the problem more com even more complicated. So there are many unknowns, and uh, which is not only a Chinese uh, issue, but also a global issue, because basically we have very little understanding about that interaction. Now we have this opportunity in China uh, where a lot of emissions are, are happening and uh, to study the, really the interaction between the gases, the chemistry, and also its impact on climate, especially we call it boundary layer dynamics, which is very unique uh, in this study. Of course, you, know, you say how important it is for China, of course, but you know, global warming and climate change is happening all over, all over the world. You know, uh, you know, so how does that information and, and what gets studied here help you know, places like in, in, in India or even in the U.S., you know, mm. where we have pollution everywhere in every corner of the world, especially as wind and you know, the, uh, the atm not the atmosphere, but um, uh, climate really helps push all of that pollution you know, everywhere and it gets spread. You know? So how does, it, how does that help? Well, yeah. you're right that uh, both air pollution, climate change does not recognize national borders. Mm -hmm. So this is a scientific issue. So what we can help is that we are increase a scientific understanding of the processes that are involved in making uh, air pollutants and also in influencing climate change. So if we get that knowledge, that knowledge get to be published, get to be uh, used in climate models that will benefit the whole world. I really do hope so, and I do really appreciate both of the time, both of y'all's time. Uh, so before we say goodbye, I know that this would have to be redeployed. We hear like engines starting. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. know if that's just yeah. part of trying to keep it from flying away. Yeah. Uh, but uh, again, you know, as we ask here the professors to redeploy the uh, the airship, I'm uh, going to then pass it on to Serena, who is standing by at a at a science lab, who is uh, which is researching a lot on human health. Very interesting stuff. So stick around and please uh, help us. You know, give the call and have it take it away. Okay, I, <laughs> yeah. I will ask them to take it away. Thanks, Oscar. And right now, I'm inside this plant growth chamber. As you can see, a lot of veggies around me. And ne right next to me is the Professor Hong 
Miss uh, Miss Hong, who you know helped to discover the um, um, channel or like a media through the letters to cure the hepatitis B, which is very amazing. So, uh, could you tell us uh, more about your um, discovery, especially how how long would this letters take the whole process to grow? Oh, uh, if. Uh, it takes almost three months. Three months from, from seed germination to mm -hmm. harvest for processing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So is this uh, like a regular lettuce we can get from the market? No, not yet. Not, not, uh, it not. looks like normal, but it's not only now is in the lab right now because it's not a, looks like normal, but it's a contains some special uh, components. So what's the special component? It's some um, silencing RNAs mm -hmm. for HPV. Okay. Uh, wow. Okay, so um, I wonder why lettuce, but why not radish or you know other type of veggies? Why lettuce? Yeah, your question very, very good. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah, the reason why we select lettuce is because the, the benefits of lettuce are obvious. Mm -hmm. First, lettuce is very popular in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's easy to get. Easy to get, mm -hmm. and uh, it's favorite by the person, right? Yes. And, and the whole plant are edible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and the cultivation condition is another limited limited factor, but it's easy to to be plant. Oh, it's easy and to plant. Yes, mm -hmm. and it can be planted all the year round, right? All the year round. Yeah. Yes. And uh, in the short period of time, it can raise a large amount of biomass. I see. Ah, uh, it's a command for us to harvest the, the medical RNAs from it. I see. Yeah. In addition, um, lettuce is a diploid plant. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy for us to get the homozygous seeds from it. I see. Mm -hmm. So uh, compared to other type of veggies, lettuce is more easy to get and more easy to cultivate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Easier to cultivate. So that's the reason you guys chose the lettuce as the uh, channel to you know keep this, keep your uh, keep your research. Yeah, it's easy to cultivate it mm -hmm. and get the seeds and get the homozygous. I see. Okay, so I wonder, you know, have you um, have you guys ever done any you know experiment on the real human being, like human bodies? Let's see. Let well. Let's put the um, questions more uh, simply. So can I just like you know pick one slice and get up uh, and try this right now? Yeah, you can put it. In. No we can try it, yeah, right? Yeah, can try. It. Should I? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's just you like be, uh, uh, the, the this one. one. You can use this bigger. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll just uh, grab a little, a, little. a slide. Mm -hmm. Um, like a normal one, right? Yeah, it just tastes like the salad I would get for lunch later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In fact, it's from the commercial available. I this, see. This, this cultivar. I see. Mm -hmm. But like, how long are we expect to see this in the market? Do we know? Yeah. That's uh, hard to say. <laughs> yeah, hard to say. Yeah, from laboratory to the market, mm -hmm. it contains many processes. Mm -hmm. Also need some approvals from the department that can shun. I see. So put it All the paperwork. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, fingers crossed. I hope, hopefully, we can see this uh, on the market soon. So there will be, you know, help more patients to get recover as soon as they can. Oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, so that's the, um, you know, life-saving letters we just saw before. And now I'm about to meet um, Professor John as well as the dean of the um, college, excuse me, <laughs> of the College of Life Science. And he will give us more in-depth and overview, you know, knowledge of the school. Hi, Mr. John, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm good. All right, so could you tell us more about, I can see those posters hanging on the wall. Yeah. Would you tell us more about your research and the, you know, the overview of this school? Okay, mm -hmm. basically we think uh, we have a revolutionary uh, discoveries. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's too complicated, just in briefly. We have found that the RNA mm -hmm. is stably present in the outside of the cells. I see. Okay, maybe it's too complicated, but uh, why it's important? Mm -hmm. uh, I just uh, uh, see some applications. For example, the microRNA in the serum, in the body serum, mm -hmm. uh, serving as a new class of the biomarkers for diagnosis, prognosis, detection. For example, we developed one uh, the 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 first uh, diagnostic kit of in the world. Wow. For the pancreatic first cancer. Ever. Oh. Yeah, first okay. one okay. in the world. And uh, they increased the accuracy of the early stage. Uh, stage, stage one, one and stage, stage two. two. Uh, diagnosis 
uh, from, from 74 the percent to the four, something like this, but the, it's less 30 percent. Oh, I see. The other one. They increase the increase accuracy. Increase a lot. Increase yes. a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then uh, we are not only can diagnose this, but also based on our discovery, mm -hmm. we uh, also developed a new generation of on AI mm -hmm. therapy. And uh, using this technology, mm -hmm. basically, uh, we can uh, treat like uh, uh, pancreatic cancer, mm -hmm. specific uh, genes, uh, which one is uh, the whole world tried to find the inhibitor mm -hmm. uh, for 40 years, yeah. but they all failed. I but uh, we can do it. Wow. For example, this is uh, we uh, treat the, uh, the long, this is lung cancer, cancer. The, yeah. uh, without, you know, the gene is a uh, uh, non mutant EGFR, okay? okay. It's dramatically. All very, you see all very scientific one? terms. Yeah. I'm trying to process it, okay. <laughs> but it's okay. okay. Go ahead. Okay. Another thing is basically uh, we also can uh, treat the uh, brain cancer. The brain Glia cancer. Yeah, glioblastoma. Uh-huh. Okay. This uh, is uh, very interesting, but the other one, more provocative mm -hmm. findings, we have found that micron A is present in the food. In food? In food. What the daily does it food mean? we consume? Da yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think uh, the For example? grandpa mm -hmm. already, uh, grandma already <laughs> uh, told you we are what we eat. Yes. And we the, are what well, we eat. We eat remember yeah. that. And also, the, uh, we think this is a kind of uh, we are not only eating materials, we are also eating information. Information, wow. For example, mm -hmm. okay, uh, uh, this the is a honeybee. Bee, honeybee, but yes. The, another one is uh, more exciting. Okay. Which is the. Which, no, uh, uh, basically, it's uh, a honeysuckle. Oh. The Chinese traditional herb have been uh, used to treat a viral infection for a thousand years. Wow. We identified specific, specific uh, uh, micron A in the soup. They can treat viral infection diseases. I see. Including uh, flu virus and, uh, and uh, Ebola virus, etc. I see. Wow, those are very you know, useful and informative. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Okay. Ranke, because we have very limited time, so we yeah, have to we run have, uh, to uh, another uh, lab, right? Yeah, yes. I know one of your students is standing by there and, and ready to introduce yes. us about the silkworm, which you've conducted the research before as well, right? Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, so we're entering now the um, student's lab, and uh, one of the um, students with uh, Professor John. Hi, um, how are you? Hello. Hi, how are you? So can you tell us, uh, quickly tell us uh, what's, what this experiment or research is about? Okay, now you can see the silkworm is yeah. contained, the artificial diet. Can we take a closer look and, on the, clo okay, yeah, so the diet, mm -hmm. you can see the silkworm is taking the artificial diet. Yeah. And this diet contains the microRNAs from the moth, mulberry leaves. I see. So, and after it takes the diet, mm -hmm. the microRNA can get into itself and go through all of the tissues and regulate the silkworm's gene expression and this phenomenon called cross kingdom regulations. So by this experiment, we, want, we are trying to figure out the reason why the silkworm only take or only have the mulberry leaves for their diet. And we think it is because about, it is because um, the yes, the microRNA is contains in the leaves. I see. Yes. Well, to simply put what you have said before, basically you guys discovered why the uh, silkworm, some of the silkworms are growing bigger and more faster. It's yes. because the, these silkworms are consuming some certain microRNAs from the leaves yes. right here. Yes. Right? So that helps your continual research. And because, it's, you know, it's a, it's a curious questions about in thousand years no one knows why the silkworm only have the mulberry leaves I see and now we are trying to find the answer mm -hmm. until now no one can answer it and in our research yeah we just want to figure out why this happened okay so how long was this whole procedure took mm, we think Maybe for one year we will publish all of the data. Oh yes. wow! So one year from right now, 
<laughs> if all the things goes well. If everything yeah. goes well, we're expecting the results within one year. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. That is very interesting. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. You. All right. Thanks. Um, thank you for staying with us through the whole live stream where you're watching Campus Crawl Live with the CGTN. And that is all for the School of Life Science. And I know my co-host Oscar is standing by on the other side of the campus. Let's see what he has to offer. Serena, I'm stating the obvious here. I know I have a stick on my head. And uh, well, this is more than just a balancing act, guys. So uh, please understand that there's a purpose to this. And that's why I have with me uh, Mr. Miao Pong, who is a graduate student here. And uh, he's going to help us explain what we're doing. Yeah. So don't just, just pay attention to we saw our eye contact. Eye, oh, eye contact, okay. Yes. We are just like a mural. Yeah. Oh! Ah, oh. oh. oh, failed already. You want to try it? Just a little more. Okay. Right, one more try, one more try. And so, tell us why we have a stick on our heads. So, you know, in real performance, we have to uh, cooperate with each other very well. We, don't, we can't communicate with each other through verbal science. We just communicate with each other with our body, and we just like a mirror. Okay. I'm trying to mimic what you're doing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh. <laughs> oh. This is harder than, than it seems, guys. Well, imagine just trying to go live right now on a show and also balance a stick. Yeah, I see one. Oh, I want to see anybody try that, right? <laughs> anyway, what's the purpose of all this? What, uh, you're, let's state the obvious. Uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself. And what is it that you study here at Nanjing University? Yes, I'm a postgraduate student. My name is Miao Pong, and I'm learning theater. Yes. Theater. That's yeah. why we're doing a, a bodily performance, right? We're, yeah. we're acting with our bodies. Yes. And so tell us a little bit uh, more about these exercises. Why do you use a stick? And, and show us a little more of, you know, how do you practice and how do you train to be a better actor? Okay, okay let's show another case. case. Okay. So, so there's one point, point another point. point. We, do not, can, we can't move, so we just hold the two points. And the other parts of your body, you can move freely. Just okay. like this, I'll show you. Now you just like you are crippled. I see. OK. Yeah. So you're yeah. using the stick like if it was another extension of your body. Yeah. It's like if you had an extra arm or an extra leg. Yeah. So you have to basically keep moving as naturally as you can yeah. using another object that's usually foreign to yourself. So you have to get used to that, right? Yes. OK, I see. I see yeah. what you're doing. OK. So. And so you practice to do that, obviously, to be in character. You mentioned like if somebody was disabled and so you were, you were trying to act like one, right? Yeah. Okay. So what's another, what's another technique that you use? Another technique? So, so let me show you another case. OK. Uh, let me I, I grab the stick. OK. Yes. So, so let's push. Why your body push? P push the stick. Okay. Yes, push. Why stick? our body stay as close as we can? Oh, so we as, as, as close as we can. can. Yeah. Why well, push? I'm, I'm going to take you by your word. I'm going to get as close as I can here. Yeah. Push. With our eye contact. Eye contact. Okay. Don't smile. Be natural. Maybe we're just like warriors. We want to kill each other, but don't show your emotion. You must be really comfortable getting close to people, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Trying to keep character, okay. So five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Wow, that's really tense. Yeah. Did you, you see I really got into character, right? Did I do a good job? Yeah, you can sense the tense, the power of tense. Exactly. Yes. Wow. And 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 obviously you were challenging my personal space. And uh, and obviously you know, that's something that you need as an actor, right? To be comfortable, to be so close to each other, yeah. to have eye contact. That's not yes. usually not very, uh, not very common. You know, in daily lives, we try to avoid people. We look down. We're yeah. trying to not keep our distances because we don't know each other. But what you did just now, I mean, I really don't know you either. And we got really, really close. I don't usually do that. So you were challenging my personal space. That's really awesome. So tell us a little bit more about your experience as a graduate student here. Why did you choose Nanjing University? Because I love theater, and in my class, I know how to write a 
give it a review and how to write a script right and how to perform myself. I want to know how to control my emotion in my practice class and it's all I learned in my system semester this year. I see. Well, yeah. that's really, really awesome. And so you studied your undergraduate uh, another, you know, in another university, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, okay, I see. And so um, tell us a little bit a bit about, you know, how the theater classes have helped you, you know, in, you know, professionally, you were, you were saying that you practice how to be a script writer, right? Uh, so what is your long-term goals here? What is it that you want to accomplish here in Nanjing? So, so, you know, know I, I want to be a script writer, writer but, but, you know, when, we, when I am writing my script, mm -hmm. I have to know the expressions, I have to know the expression of the actor, and the, their, their movement, movement, they all have meanings. We just don't only pay attention to the words, mm -hmm. but all the things in theater. I see. And you yeah. perform also, right? You perform, uh, yeah. you know, professionally. That you do plays and you act and everything, right? That's part of yeah. what you do here at the university. Yes, that's really cool. Well, uh, Miao Pang, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. That was really interesting, guys. You know, obviously, I would love to be a, now I would like to be a, an actor of, or at least study acting. That was really awesome. But there's many other opportunities here at this university, and that's why we're now joined by the professor. Thank you so much for joining us here and for explaining what, what other opportunities exist in Nanjing University, not just for the theater students. Uh, so uh, please uh, help us introduce yourself. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Chong Peng Lo. I'm an associate professor of linguistics at uh, the School of Liberal Arts, Nanjing University. Okay. And I spend most of my time in teaching linguistics and uh, doing research in linguistics. And we are in the College of Liberal Arts right That's now. That's right, that yeah. That linguistics correct. is one of them. Okay, and so yeah. we, uh, <coughs> we're in the Liberal Arts College. I see a few posters here. What can you tell us about the, these uh, posters? All there? these are the works of the students, you can say. And uh, this theater actually is a stage for students. Students can come, play, enjoy, and learn. Very nice. And so tell us now about Nanjing, a little more about the College of Liberal Arts, and also tell us a little bit more about you know, the actual university. What are the opportunities? What are the options for students? Why would somebody who's watching want to come to this university? I'd say uh, the school is the most ideal place for students, for anyone who is interested in, in Chinese language, literature, and culture. The school has a very long history and rich tradition to maintain a high standard of, of education. Uh, it's one of the oldest and the most prestigious departments specializing in Chinese language and literature in China. I think its origin can be traced back to 1886. 1886, Wait, more than 100 right, yeah, yeah. years. More than 100 years, Almost yeah, when the University of yeah. Nanking was founded. Wow. Yes, during its history of more than 100 years, it has been associated with a great number of uh, literati in China, Zhao Yuanren, uh, Liu Shuxiang, Fang Guangtao, Hu, uh, Hu Shi, to name, name just a few. And so tell us, over the course of all these years, how do you maintain such a strong level, such a competitive level, you know, basically the prestigiousness of the school, how do you maintain all that through all these years, you know, in order to continue to be successful? Yeah, uh, to maintain the highest standards possible of education, the school has many meritorious traditions. One of them, as we have just seen, is that uh, placing great emphasis on the unity of knowledge and action, which in Chinese is known as zhi xing he yi. What you know and what you do are the same thing. Okay, uh, very interesting yes, philosophy. Yes, and this tradition can be traced back to 1928, when Wu Mei, one of the greatest theatrical masters in China, founded the program of drama and theater at the then National Central University, one of the presidents of Nanjing University. Of Nanjing University, That's okay. Right. And the second tradition is the stress on the fusion between teaching and research. The school believes that teaching and research are inseparable. That, yeah, okay. an excellent teacher must be a wonderful teacher, a researcher, and an excellent researcher must be a wonderful teacher. So basically a student also obviously learns from the professor, and the and professor the practice, yeah. can also learn from the students, that's and it's, right. it, it's, you share that knowledge, and that's important. That's part of the philosophy. For, that's that right. Yeah, we have been uh, creating a community, friendly community for students and uh, teachers. Okay. Yeah. Obviously this is a wonderful space for, for uh, people who want to practice. We just saw it just a few moments ago where students, you know, have the opportunity opportunity to learn the theory and also apply uh, the theory to practice exactly okay. and to have better understanding of the theory okay and uh, the third one is that to meet the challenges of the new age the school has introduced many frontier courses using the same teaching materials as those of the most prestigious universities in the West 
Okay. Well, so it's uh, all these courses are in bilingual, are taught in bilingual, I mean in Chinese and English. And in English, okay. That's right. And this bilingual education actually combines the wisdom of the East and the West. Wow. And the student, and it has tremendously broadened the horizon of the students. I bet, I bet it does. Well, Professor, I really appreciate your time. Before we actually wrap this up, I do have a question here uh, that our, our viewers are sending us. Not a question, but actually a comment I'm being told by my producer right now. I'm reading a comment from Facebook. Uh, Awan Satrio says, I think it's wonderful about the Chinese music. Uh, usually we use a lot of string and variety. Play music needs unity. Uh, it was there, very interested. Thank you so much for your comment, Awan. Uh, I t totally agree. We saw the orchestra playing right now. A lot of people are commenting about the musical performances, and it was incredible. There is a lot of unity, and you know, very particular part of Chinese music is is obviously the the string instrument. So. Don't forget to keep sending your comments and your questions. Use that hashtag, Campus Crawl. Remember, hashtag Campus Crawl. That way we can identify what you're saying and try to, you know, obviously highlight it there in our social media. Professor, it was such okay, a pleasure. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much for educating us about Nanjing University. Obviously, this is a great place, and you guys truly show that. Uh, Serena, I'm going to have to toss it over to you. That's all the time that I have, guys. I really enjoyed being here. Serena, please wrap the show for us. All right, thanks, Oscar. Now I am standing outside these um, another landmark buildings on the uh, newest campus. For those of you have, who have stayed throughout the whole live stream, you might be aware that this building actually looks quite familiar, uh, familiar to similar to the um, you know the the other one we visited on the, in Gu Lao campus. This is called the um, South Administrative Administrative Building. It sounds like it's a you know, administrative building, of course it is. And then it looks quite like the um, the building we visited before on the on another campus. Well, it's, you know, very, it's, it looks very modern, but it's also, you can see some Chinese, traditional Chinese elements with this as well. So that's, you know, I'm about to wrapping up with our live stream today. But wow, look at that, that giant UFO. But if you are staying, if you were stayed with us, then you might know what, what is it called. So that's the, um, that's the blimp, we call it blimp. You know, Oscar just sent out with uh, the students from the, uh, from the school to test out the air, quali air quality. Anyway, before we let you go, you know, we've, uh, um, our editors uh, back home has selected two lucky viewers who have been you know uh, staying with us throughout the whole live stream and le leave all all loving messages and even toast the questions on the um, Weibo platform so after the live stream our our editor will make sure to reach out to you and send the send out the lovely calendar to you guys all right as we about to wrapping up the live stream, we are, but we're still con we're still continuing our journey throughout the uh, throughout the country for uh, different for various campuses. If you want us to um, visit your dream school, or if you want to be our campus guide, don't forget to leave your message, and we'll make sure to get back to you as soon as we can. All right, thank you guys. Thank you so much for staying with uh, with us. We'll see you guys next time.